Hi, I'm Anna. And I'm Ryan. And sleeping over here are Nova and Juniper. We are in our bus Beluga. Beluga is a 2008 Ford E350 shuttle bus that has been converted into a camper. So th this is a review video for the Zero Breeze Mark II. Um, it's a portable air conditioning unit. We can carry it around really anywhere. So what's important about our bus for the purposes of today's review is that this bus is really poorly insulated. It is 90% windows. Um, as you can see. Just to clarify, we were given this Zero Breeze Mark II for this review video, but we were searching around for um, a portable air conditioning unit just because we do live in a bus some of the year. And with the dogs, we were looking for something that we could park the bus and actually leave the dogs um, and not have to worry about the bus getting too hot. One of the first things that we were drawn to with this is the portability. It is only 16 pounds. I think 16 and a half is the exact weight. Um, so it's easy to, to lift up. It's 20 inches long by 10 inches wide by 11 inches high. It doesn't take up that much space. It does have this nice ergonomic handle. Um, the handle doesn't seem like it's flimsy at all. Um, that's not gonna break. Another thing that I noticed really quickly is that it's not too loud. It's only 52 decibels. It also has like a quiet nighttime where it turns off all the lights and uses less battery and it also goes quieter. Um, the way this works is this is an exhaust for your hot air. This is an intake and also the cold air blows out right here. They have these hose attachments which clip on right here. And you can stretch these hose to a window or to a vent. Um, outside a tent, you can use these. Um, this one is your intake hose. The Zero Breeze also comes with this hose for the front, which is connected right here. And then you can drag this, so you could have this going into, say, an office room, directed towards the back of the bus, or have this unit on the outside of a tent and have the hose snaking through the door of the tent. It also comes with a drainage hose, because air conditioning units do make some humidity. The water has to go somewhere. This is your drainage hose. Um, we usually just plop this into the sink or into like a, a gallon jug. It has a digital temperature display. Another little feature of this is a light right here, which is nice, but not necessary. Here is your power input right here. We have this plugged into a wall outlet right now, which is powered by our battery, um, but charged by solar. For the most part, we usually use this unit inside our bus, and we usually have this plugged in just because it's a more reliable battery source than just the batteries that you can purchase separately. But it is nice having these batteries to be able to cool down a tent real quick or somewhere we don't have a power source. You have your battery right here and the Zero Breeze goes on right there and you've got your battery connected right to the bottom. There is the power source right here. There's also a USB-C and two USB charging docks. To plug in the battery, you have to first unplug this from the wall. You take this cord, one goes on top here, and the other goes on the bottom right here. Now your Zero Breeze is portable. Um, the battery life is only about three to four hours, um, five hours if you're using in an energy efficient mode. It's long enough to cool down in a small area. We, you could use the plug, but it, it does use about 240 watts. We do have a fan vent, which we use all the time because we are in warmer climates usually. But we also have a Dometic AC unit on top of our van. We can't use our roof mounted AC unit with the batteries or the solar. So do have to be plugged into shore power, but we rarely use that. We have the ability to use it, but we don't like paying for campgrounds. We like boondocking. We like being out in nature, being off grid and staying there pretty much as long as we can to explore the area. We've got it plugged into our shore power or our power right there. And then we have this intake hose sucking in cold air. It comes in 
and it blows out right here. And for the hot air exhaust, we have a hose going all the way up to our fan vent. And what I've made is our fan vent is exhausting out our air. And this little piece of reflectix that has the hose going through it, the uh, suction from the fan actually holds that in place, the little piece of reflectix. So you've got all your hot air from the air conditioning being exhausted to the top and fanned out. And then we also have just the reflectix on all of the windows and that keeps the, the sunlight, the direct sunlight out and it allows this thing to cool this place down enough so we could just leave the dogs. Um, some cons I do have about this. Um, one, when we're when using the battery, the battery only lasts say three to five hours. So this usually doesn't work with just leaving it somewhere and being able to cool the area down while we're gone. Another con that I do not like is not having the ability to charge the battery and plug it in and use it at the same time. I think they do sell an accessory pack where you can charge the battery and use this at the same time. If there was ever a reason for this to short circuit, we would like a battery backup. So if there's a way that you could have the battery backup, that would be the greatest. Another con about this is the fact that it's not powerful enough to cool this RV down in direct sunlight. If you left the, the RV out in the middle of the desert and left this thing on, it would struggle keeping a low temperature with the sun beating down on it. It's not used for cooling a, an area for an unlimited amount of time, just used to cool down areas really quick. We just figured we'd test it out on this trip. We're doing a little sort of long weekend getaway um, in the Colorado mountains. And so we just thought we'd bring the Zero Breeze along and see, mm -hmm. see how it holds up. Especially because we often find ourselves in these predicaments where we can't leave the windows open because of the way they're designed in this bus. The dogs can get out of them. Um, so even though we've sort of created screens for them, which works perfectly um, to get a nice cross breeze in here when we're in the bus with the dogs, if we leave, we have to close the windows. It's 80 degrees in the bus right now. So I'm going to start the timer at 10 minutes, which is what Zero Breeze says that it takes to cool down how many degrees? So supposedly this thing should be able to cool down 30 degrees in 10 minutes, so we shall see. Got the timer on. It currently says 65. It's quite cool. Dogs are a little hot. We're a little hot. So, we have all the windows, like curtains, open. So definitely not doing any favors, which normally, if we were really hot, we would definitely close all of these. Looks like Nova's cooling off, June not so much. It does feel a lot cooler. This thing says 49. Okay, let's see. degrees in 10 minutes. So in the end it really only cooled off about five degrees Fahrenheit for us in 20 minutes. Again there are a lot of factors for that. We probably could have cooled it down a little bit more if we put like reflectix up on the window. Um, this this is a shuttle bus so it is 90% windows in here which definitely makes it different than if it was you know like a, a well insulated camper van or a house or whatever environment you're in is better insulated than it is in here. This does make a nice solution um, for theoretically being able to leave the dogs in the bus, but I, I wouldn't risk it if it was like a really hot day by any means because there is very clearly limitations to what this thing can do, especially in a bus that is not very well insulated like this one. And it's also like kind of a catch-22 because we need the sun to be able to charge our solar panels to be able to run something like this and to run everything else that we, you know, we run in here mm -hmm. on electricity. 
um, but then at the same time that obviously is gonna make it hotter in here so it's gonna make more work for this thing it definitely helps a little uh, it's not a dramatic difference for us specifically in the camper van our bus is about 115 square feet um, so it does have to cool down a lot of space when we started this it was around 6 p.m. it's June so the Sun is setting around 8 30 so we started a few hours before sunset this test in sort of a cloudy it's been on and off cloudy in that time um, but yeah it, it does have to cool down a large space mm -hmm. if you're looking for something to just knock down the temperature a little bit say in an office or a tent it, it would definitely do the job that's pretty much all we have for the zero breeze mark ii thank you for listening to my review if you liked the video give it a thumbs up if you found it informative please give it a thumbs up also, if you would like more off-grid living, van life, adventure, travel, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you guys. Bye.